Harris steals the tap. Wilcox not quite ready. We watched these two teams practice yesterday. I have never seen a team number one seed any looser than Maryland was. It'll be interesting to see if they're focused for this game. Packing way in. Tomorrow from the outside for Kentucky. That defense was packed inside 18 feet. All five players from Maryland almost inside the blue paint. That looseness you saw with Maryland at practice yesterday, did you like that? Well, you never know. You don't know how guys are going to react. Good job by Hayes on Wilcox. And Hawkins clears for Kentucky. Pull up jumper. And it's Wilcox at the other end for the Terps. Now there's something Gary Williams loves to see, and that is Wilcox aggressively going for the ball. When he is on top of his game, he rebounds a foot higher than anybody else in the game. Mouton short on the shot. He has struggled offensively in the first two rounds of the tournament. His last big game was against Florida State in the ACC tournament since that time, although the other night he did get on the boards. And also very, yes, very aggressive defensively. Hayes, three-point shot. And again, good position underneath for Maryland and Wilcox. Great hit ahead. Dixon. Looking for help, and Prince steals it away for Kentucky. Probably should have put that ball up in the glass because he had Baxter there for the follow-up. Fast and furious at the start on the line. Turnover. Turk ball. Gary Williams going absolutely crazy on that sideline. Not like he was acting at all yesterday, where he was very relaxed with his ball club. Wanting them to get on the offensive glass, which has got to be the key for Maryland in this game. Gary Williams took his alma mater to its first ever Final Four last year in Minneapolis. In his 13th season on the Maryland bench, former captain back in 1967 as a point guard. Another turnover back to Kentucky. Bogans on Dixon. He's got strength on him. Maybe Dixon has the advantage quickness-wise. Well, we have the one here in the East, Maryland in action. The one in the Midwest, Kansas against Illinois. Coming your way, or for some of you here shortly on CBS, we'll get you to your tip on time. Two, three quarter court trap. Bogans with the three, and his shooting is something to pay very close attention to tonight. It really is. If you're Tubby Smith, you've got to like it against Valparaiso. He had 21 against Tulsa, 19. Really the key for this team offensively. Wilcox got free for the dunk. He's probably given up too much size to handle Wilcox inside. Hayes almost didn't see Mouton step in on him. Kentucky's a very deep team, so they're not going to get the press to get these guys fatigued. Tubby Smith can go 11 deep. Bogans again. Three-point shot. Yes. These are huge, Jim. Keith Bogans coming into the NCAA tournament had made only two of his last 28 from three. He's two for two tonight at the start. And this six-point Kentucky lead hands Maryland its largest deficit of the tournament. Blake with a two-point shot. Jim, talking about Bogans, he's had five 20-point games, and when he has 20, they all five are wins. Hawkins missing the lay-in, cleared away by Baxter. Dangerous pass. Hawkins almost picked it off. This Blake and Hawkins matchup at the point. Former teammates at Oak Hill, Hawkins and Blake. They were 31-0, in fact, the one year they were teammates. Best team in the nation. Well, Hawkins set all, all kinds of assist records there. You have two guys. You have Blake, number two assist man in the country, and those are two pretty good ball handlers on a high school team, wouldn't you say? Well, that is a strong backcourt. And Prince. Prince, first two of the night, coming there's, off the 41. There's his specialty and why he's so tough to match up against. He's got that little leaner on the inside, used so effectively against Tulsa. Baxter doubled up. Tough pass, Dixon able to handle it. You can see Kentucky is really gonna crowd down on Baxter when he gets that ball inside. Oh, he banks it home, Dixon. Was not called. I thought I heard it. No, no, he what, didn't call it? that one. Okay. He might have scored 58 in the last two games, but that one he did not play. Yes, yeah, coming off back-to-back 29-point -back games. Dixon, the all-time score in Maryland history, and Mouton with the steal for Maryland. Maryland loves to get that ball in Blake's hands, setting up Baxter down in low. And Dixon is another guy, and although I think Bogans will be able to handle him with his strength down low, Dixon has two threes of his own. Great solid screen by Wilcox on Bogans, who's very strong, but was cut off. 
Bogans inside to Hayes. Beautifully set up by Bogans. You got to remember, Bogans played high school basketball just a stone throw from the University of Maryland. So he's got a lot going on in this game in regard to his emotions. Played showing it to Matha. He's showing people back home he belongs. That's a push by Dixon. Well, you look out here on the floor and you see this team in blue. Can you remember St. Petersburg when Duke had that lead with about nine minutes to go and Kentucky made that kind of a comeback? Beautiful pass. Mouton converts on the inside. Wasn't that the same margin? Yes, too? you raised 17 an interesting point. 17 points down in the first half. Indiana against Duke last night. And, well, back in 98, Kentucky came back from 17 down to Duke with 9.38 remaining. Went on to win the championship. Baxter on the push off before the shot. Baxter tried that little shove on the inside on Kamara, trying to move him out one more step. But Kamara does have nice range on his jump shot. Baxter, who has played so well in his career in the NCAA tournament. Sophomore, junior. And, of course, right now he's off to a good start as well. Hayes misses the jumper. Dixon underneath. All the starters still on the floor. Both teams blessed with great depth. It's Baxter up ahead, and Blake found him. Absolutely perfect lead pass. Baxter with the great hands. All five starters have scored for Maryland. Prince misses, but Bogans unable to convert with the left hand. Hayes tied up. Arrow, Maryland. This Maryland team, an outstanding shot blocking group. On the year, they've got 198. That's 199 blocks. Terrific timing by Baxter. Eric Daniels, number 14 in for Kentucky, and J.P. Blevins also off the bench. One of the things that Mouton did on that last occasion, Jim, he came down to help out inside, and he's on Prince. He can ill afford to do that. He's going to have to stay out there with him. Boy, they're setting some solid screens that are tough. Blake gives it up to Baxter, who traveled. Maybe twice. Good job by Kamara. These two teams played twice in 99. And remember, you know, there's kind of battles here. Maryland had a chance for the first time in their career and in their history to become the number one team in the nation. They went over to Kentucky and they got beat. It ended a 13-game streak that would have put Maryland in the number one spot. Tomorrow, last moment, gives it up. Prince unable to get the handle. It's Blake for Maryland. You got to go down on the floor if you're a big man on that. Great catch by Dixon. Wow, was it ever. Skied for it, missed the shot, missed the chippy. Blake, three-pointer. Altered the shot. Tomorrow with the rebound. Yes, they met twice in a very short time frame. It's Bogans, Daniels, and Daniels with the foul. And they split that series. Yeah, they did. Uh, they got in the preseason NIT, Kentucky won 61 58. And then they came right back a very short time later. And uh, Maryland came back with a 72 66 win. That win for Maryland at second meeting back in 99 gave Gary Williams his 200th win at Maryland. Got it against Kentucky. So Daniels on the foul, and Drew Nicholas comes in for Maryland. Mouton out. And here you see Gary Williams matching up with Tubby Smith. Three-guard lineup. Now the size advantage actually goes to Maryland. Good job by Bokins. He is fighting Dixon off, trying to come around that corner. Marquise Estel also comes in for Kentucky. Another big body, number 50. Nicholas underneath. Feeds Baxter. And Prince with the rebound. Kentucky wants to run with it. Bogans on the wing. Bogans steps past Blake and a three-point opportunity. Great job by Bogans on that play. Was able to watch him, his footwork on this, Jim. He will step to the right, glide to the left, and then release. Terrific job on his part not to charge on the play and be totally under control. Like step to the right, then a release. Excellent job. Bogans, who's had a lot of problems this year. There was a lot expected of him. He was preseason, first team All-SEC. An interesting thing, Jim, in regard to Kentucky. Only one player on this Kentucky team, and we know how deep it is, made first, second, or third team All-SEC. Prince, of course, first teamer. Gerald Fitch has come in for Kentucky. Taj Holden for Maryland. Fitch, a good defender, matches up nicely with Dixon. Defense, 
Nicholas blocked by Estel. Nicholas, a sneaky score for this team. In the NCAA tournament so far, he's at seven, nine, eight. Those are big points coming off the bench. He can shoot it from long range, too, as witnessed by the two of us yesterday. Yeah. He can, but he's matched up right now with Prince, which is no challenge whatsoever for Prince. Prince, too strong with the shot. Put back Daniels to the line for two. To those who watch Kentucky play midway through the season, they wouldn't recognize this young man on the line because a little change of hairdo. His mom, Carmen, said, son, you're getting a haircut. And uh, he looks like an entirely different person out there. When mom speaks, they listen. As everyone should. Holden running the baseline. Full court pressure here. Nobody going over the top. Blevins, tough matchup for Blake. Blake quicker off the dribble than Blevins is defensively with his feet. Extra down on the baseline. Wanting to make a move on Estel. And a foul outside. Point win over Wisconsin, Billy, was the largest margin of victory in Maryland NCAA tournament history. Blake guns a three, long rebound, Baxter. The Bo Ryan's team just couldn't keep up with the offensive firepower of Maryland. Dixon from the deep corner, not hitting, shot altered by Prince. They've missed their last seven, Maryland. Prince. Nice job by Holden. Cutting off that three-point attempt. Prince figures he can take him on a dribble. Steps back for the three, yes! And he's just too quick for Holden. Tayshon with five, and Kentucky's margin is five. Good job by the bench for Tubby Smith coming in here and building on the lead from the starters. Bounce pass in the lane. Nicholas, baseline shot, Dixon. There's a case where Fitch cannot afford to help out. When you're on Dixon, you've got to stay right with him, almost from a face-guarding standpoint. It's a travel. Basket by Dixon at the other end. Broke a three-and-a-half-minute drought for the Terps. Deshaun Prince showing some early signs that he's going to be hot again here tonight. Well, Jim Tubby Smith was the man of the hour in overtime games, and now they've lost four straight over two years. Yeah, he won his first seven right. overtime games at Kentucky. And now, going back to last year, he's lost his last four. Randall in the ball game down inside. Maryland right. using a lot of bulk in there against this team on the floor for Kentucky. Interesting matchups. Steve Blake cuts it to one. Levin's getting a lot of minutes here at the start. Trying to save Hawkins' energy a little bit. Fitch steps in for a two. Rebound hold. Up ahead, Maryland looking for the lead, and they get it with new time. Jim, two outstanding defensive plays by Holden in this game. He stepped out on Prince. That time he got out on Fitch. We're going to see Hawkins coming back into the game. Kentucky a little out of sync offensively. Fitch. Oh, clobbered by Nicholas. He did not release it, so it will not be on the shot. He could have got three fouls here if he had just let the ball go. When he saw Nicholas up in the air, it would have been a smart thing, Jim, just to release it to the basket. Bogans comes back along with Hawkins for Kentucky. Regular starting lineup with the exception of Estel in the game now for Kentucky. Let's see if Bogans can keep going on the hot hand he had early. Yep, Hayes returns as well. Maryland with six unanswered points here to take the one-point lead. Nicholas on Bogans. Bogans is a power player against him. Takes him down inside. He can make it work. Short on the three this time. Really good decision making out there by Steve Blake, the ACC's leader in assist and assist turnover ratio. Nation's leader in assist this year. Blake just edging out Ford from Texas. Oh, great fake. 
Blake, fade away, and Prince with the rebound. See, if you're guarding Blake, you would think that he's looking to pass rather than shoot. Of late, he'll fake you out by going for the shot. Bogans posting up on Nicholas. Blake, like, Blake like looking it. to help out. Bogans tips it, and it's Maryland ball. Dixon returns, Baxter back on the floor. One of the things that's interesting, Jim, both of these teams have quality depth. It's one thing that if you have guys that can go in and substitute, but they're maybe at all the same position. Both of these teams can substitute front court and back court and not really reduce the quality of their team much. Dixon short on the three. Estel's open. Hawkins thought about it. Now finds Bogans on the wing. Three-pointer. Hayes. Hunt fake and connects. Good patience by Hayes. The freshman who's more of a athlete than he is a basketball player, but he really has fit nicely into this lineup. Football star back in Modesto, California in high school. Wilcox. He is fouled by Estel. Chris Wilcox coming off a big game against Wisconsin. Billy, 18 points, seven rebounds. Well, Wilcox had his big coming out party on Maryland's win over Duke. He was just awesome in that basketball game. Took it over inside. There was no matchup whatsoever that Duke had. He had 23 points, 11 rebounds. And in addition to that, the show is versatility. He went out and guarded Dunleavy. Coach Weber. Coach Weber of Southern Great. Illinois. Getting a nice uh, round of applause from his faithful. Looks like he's coming down to do a little uh, broadcast work. Wilcox, one of two. Hayes with the board. Yep. There's Bruce Weber. They're probably a little bit more comfortable than having to sit on that side and analyze that first game. And we have Mouton on Bogans, a little bit of matchup. Nice back screen. And Estel just uh, with an errant pass. Maryland and Duke split during the regular season, and Kentucky and Duke had one of the real good games of the regular season up at the Meadowlands and went to overtime with Duke winning. Great show by Jason Williams to pull that out for Duke. Nicholas step back three. He can shoot. Well, yesterday from half court, he made six shots. We were counting. Yep. We thought it was five, and he wanted to make sure we knew. No, no, I've made six. They tried to put the balls away, but as long as he kept making them, I mean, they weren't in a row, fans, so don't think he can has that kind of range, but it's pretty impressive to make six shots from half court yeah, at was, any time. I would say it was maybe six out of 15, maybe 40%. I'm talking right at the mid-court stripe. Hayes trying to back in the big body of Wilcox, yeah. and he draws the foul. Good job by Hayes. Made all rookie team in the SEC this year. Got Wilcox up in the air. You know, when you talk about all-time tournament wins, Billy, Kentucky with 89, then Carolina, UCLA, Duke is fourth, Kansas. Kentucky's 43rd appearance in the NCAA tournament. That's an all-time record as well. 13 Final Fours, seven national championships. Well, they are also the winningest team in the history of college basketball, period. Not just the NCAA tournament. 1,817 wins. You know, at one time, North Carolina passed them. And uh, now they have a nice working margin on North Carolina. And Kansas is pulling up uh, right behind North Carolina as the number three team in all-time wins. Made up a considerable amount of ground this year. A lot of ground, yep. All the numbers pretty even on the board. 7.27 left in the first half. It, it ought to be a two-point game without that. And here's something Wilcox loved to do, is to throw long, but he didn't have enough mustard on that one. And Camaro was able to steal it away. He had a brief look at a couple of the UConn Huskies. Talik Brown and Justin Brown, they're watching this one. UConn will play the winner on Sunday for the East Regional title. Kamal outside, and Wilcox sweeps it away. Again, you notice every time Wilcox gets a rebound inside, Jim, he's about a foot and a half above any other player out there. Good cross-court pass. Couldn't Haw ask for it any better than that. Well, Haw Hawkins, Hawkins has to, in effect, remember what he's told. 
You cannot leave Dixon to try to help out on somebody else. And Dixon is now on crew. The same thing would hold true for him. When you're up against a great spot-up shooter, you better stay with him. It's a 13-3 run for the Terrapins. Hawkins, Hayes, patient. And Nicholas comes out. He's got Mouton up there. Mouton lays Some it in. Catch. And one. Some catch by Mouton. Back it up and still the presence of mind to hang into it. You'll see the play right here. We talked about defensive balance. Now look at what happens to Bogans. He's looking at the rebound instead of getting back on defense. And when he doesn't move, Mouton keeps right on running. Poor balance there, but Bogans is like a swing man. Plays small forward more than he does traditional guard. So consequently, he's not used to getting back there. Yeah, he, he's got his second foul there, Billy. Jim, in both games, the first game as well as this one, defensive balance has been really missing. Prince back in the game, sweeps it away for the Wildcats. Let's see that matchup on Prince. It's going to be Wilcox, and as I said, Wilcox guarded the nation's other very flexible guy in Dunleavy, but he tried, tries to help out, and when you do, you're in trouble. Prince with eight. One of the things that for Prince, you'll find very few guys that can go out there who are bigger than, than he is, who can stay with him. Wilcox is one of the few. Dixon, Carruth shut him off. Baxter spinning on Kamara and Prince again. He doesn't miss many of those. He's good with the right and the left hand. Kamara with two turps around him, and he's pushed. It depends on who they call this foul on, and here's a particular Dixon. case. Here's a particular case where the official did not get down the court fast enough to see that Dixon makes a great steal here. The official was trailing the play and couldn't have admit, imagined that Dixon could make that kind of a play. Dixon's first, they say in the act of shooting, so Camaro will shoot too. Dixon, the only player in NCAA history with 2,000 points, 300 steals, and 200 threes. And there was a case where the trail official just couldn't become the lead official. And Gary Williams is laughing because he knows exactly what happened, and so does the referee. One of two for Camaro. But give Camaro some credit for beating everybody down the floor. He's having a good, solid first half. Tap of the head and a set play coming here for Maryland. Looking Baxter for up high. They were looking for Dixon inside. Try to get himself free. Fitch guarding him. It's Wilcox backing in on Prince. Spins out, but he'll shoot a couple. Key to who these fouls are being called on inside. And even though Tubby Smith has got a deep bench, he sure doesn't want Kamara or Prince getting in any foul trouble. That's the first on Kamara. So Chris Wilcox, only a sophomore from Whiteville, North Carolina. As Gary Williams told us last week, no limit to his upside. You can really see that, Billy. Number two shot blocker in the ACC this year. Third team all-conference. But that really doesn't tell the full story of what this young man can and will be able to do. Two for two. Full court pressure now by Maryland. Hawkins breaks it with Fitch. Great job by Kentucky. Boy, and they almost could have had Caruso setting up for a nice jump shot from the outside. That was really excellent offense against full court pressure. Caruth, he's an outside shooter too. Baseliner spins out. Tipped out by Kamara into the arms of Dixon. Remember, Caruth had the great game against Duke where everything he was putting up, particularly in that first half, was going. Here's Prince to the hole. Prince lost control of it on the way up. It was fouled, it looks like, by Baxter. Baxter, indeed, his second. Here we'll see Prince go in the hole. He gets fouled right here, keeps it going, and creates the shot. The first Wildcat to put up 40 in a game in 12 years. And the number 
And as Baxter sits with two, the number of points, 41. Jack Givens made against. Think of, yep, another southpaw with number 21. That's right, against uh, Duke University in the NCAA National Championship game. Duke had three guys score 20 in that game, but it didn't make any difference because Jack Givens was just so pure. 78 title game it was. Randall back on the floor for Maryland. Blake oh. fade away. Not a good shot. Mouton fighting for it. On the arm is Kamara. Might be Karuf. Mouton getting some good offensive rebounds just as he did it in the game against Wisconsin. They're going to call it on Karuf. Kamara and Prince have been dodging fouls on the inside. Could have gone either way there. And again, Tubby Smith. It's tough for his team to get into foul trouble because they just have so many weapons and are so deep. This year they've only had five guys foul out of the game the entire season. Saw a shot of Tubby Smith who was very nearly a Maryland Terrapin. He committed out of high school out of Scotland, Maryland to play for the University of Maryland. Fitch picks up the loose ball, sets up Prince. Open three, down and out. That's the shot Prince likes. Pretty nice rebound there by Randall. Thought Fitch had a chance to be aggressive and go for an easy lob on that last fast break opportunity against the press. Dixon, long range shot. Kamara clears. Kentucky might have some numbers here. Hawkins races up. Prince, followed up by Kamara. Great running by Kentucky on that break. Right now, and right now, Maryland with Baxter on, out of the game doesn't have a low post presence. Kentucky led the nation this year in attendance there at Rupp Arena, and Syracuse, right here at the Carrier Dome, was second. They battled back and forth for a long time, and there is Blake out of bounds, catching the ball with one foot right over by the Kentucky bench. No excuse for that. Seventh turnover, Billy, by Maryland. Kentucky in the blue, inside with Kamaro, and he lost control of it. Back to Maryland. Jim, so often we'll see a big man try to go ahead and, and when he drops the ball, create a dribble off the, the drop. He's better off just getting with two hands, particularly under the basket like that. And even though Holden and Randall were in there, he might have been able to put it up and get fouled. It's been a tight one throughout. Another Maryland turnover. Have a seven-point lead at one time. A three here to tie it. Prince almost fired it. Stolen away by Blake. Bounce pass that hit the back of the leg of Prince. Prince got hit in the eye as well, Jim. That was a great closeout that time by Mouton because Prince, who was so deadly with that three-point shot and a great pump fake, but he got hit on the eye in that play. Juan Dixon comes back. He has 11 for Maryland to lead the way. And we talked to Tubby Smith yesterday about Prince and that operation that they did to clean up his sinus problems so that he could breathe better, keep himself in much better condition. And since that time, he has been quite a player at Kentucky. Well, one magnificent career, college career, will end here tonight. Will it be Prince or Dixon? Or Baxter. Both, or Baxter, all Americas. And Nicholas hits the two-point shot. What? Oh, the pass. Where was that going? Well, Hawkins spotted Prince, who really released on that jump shot. But when you're down five points, Jim, you don't want to early in this, in this first half here, or late in this first half, you do not want to go ahead and try to go for home run passes like that. They need to be more solid. Kentucky's turned it over now. It's last three possessions, trailing by five. Well, both teams playing aggressive defense, particularly on the ball, so there are going to be some turnovers. Dixon posting up on Fitch inside. Holden's a good outside shooter, so on the skip pass, you got to respect him. Dixon blocked by Fitch. Over to Nicholas with the three. Oh, he thought he made it. 
And he really didn't have that ball seated in his hands very well, but I think he shot, I thought the shot clock was going to work against him. That was some block by Fitch down inside, who is an outstanding defender. When Prince was open, unable to connect on the pass from Kamara. How about that smart move by Dixon? He turned around to see where Prince was, so he didn't have a chance to come from behind him with a steal. Holden. And last touch by Maryland. Jim Hayes that time with that steal and block as a man is releasing, getting him down on the waist before he gets the ball up in shooting position. Hawkins, oh. dish, Kamara, and Randall. Randall called on the foul. Kamara, who sat out last year, Jim, as you can remember, and has come back and, uh, and played extremely well. This year, Tubby Smith has had some revolving door with suspensions and problems and guys leaving the program and Jason Parker hurting the knee and Marvin Stone a, transferring yep. to Louisville. But it has been an amazing job. And you know, uh, Tubby talked the other day about his different composure on the sideline. And I have to say that, that it's really true watching him here uh, in the last couple of weeks. Much more relaxed and composed. And he said this group of athletes seem to respond to that better. But with all the injuries and transfers and distractions, this is still a team that has as good a depth as anyone in the NCAA field remaining. Ten players can really contribute, can start for you on any given night. Under a minute to play in the first half. Maryland leads at 35-31. Kentucky doing a real good job down and low. Look at Holden trying to get something off, but doing a real good job preventing Dixon from coming off those screens down on the baseline. Fighting through nicely as Kentucky. Hayes on the foul, Holden to the line. Taj Holden. Like Wilcox, you watch those two in a shoot around in the practice, they have tremendous outside shooting abilities. They really do, and Holden really has done a nice job in regard to his conditioning as well. I think both of these teams, and I remember when Joe B. Hall at Kentucky was really the first guy that I know of back in the early 70s that started working on conditioning and weightlifting programs, and without question, Kentucky was ahead of everybody in the country in regard to team conditioning. Now everybody does it. But nobody did it any better than Joe B. Hall did at Kentucky. Beautiful pass. Underneath Kamara. Put it on the floor once. Still able to dunk it home. We've got a two-second differential on the clocks. Maryland calls time. Only one year, though, did not a single number one make the Final Four, and that was 1980. Well, we, we have two left now, Kansas and Maryland. Remember when Kansas was the only non-number one that made the Final Four when Kentucky, Michigan, and North Carolina got there in 93. Trying to hold it for the last shot. One second differential here, so Maryland doesn't have to be in any rush, but Blake has to watch five seconds here. Is it to Wilcox in the lane and the dunk with four seconds to go. Gary Williams wants a pick up full court. There is the shot from half court and almost makes it. First possession of the second half belongs to Kentucky. The Cats down six. Hawkins looking to Lane. Hayes looking for help. Just put it up and tipped in by Kamara. Ball in the cylinder. Second time tonight we've seen somebody be able to get by with a basket with the ball in the cylinder. You thought that one shouldn't have been allowed? I do not think so. Baxter. That one was in the cylinder, but of course the same man had it that delivered. Hawkins doing a good job penetrating off the dribble inside. And then when they try to help out, Hawkins does look for the pass rather than the shot. Bogans jumper wide of the mark. Prince put back. Hayes battling, but no one's taking it away from Mouton. Do you notice how Bogans... Look at that steal oh. by Hayes. That looked like a football receiver yeah, right there. He's a 4-5, 40-yard dash man in football, and he showed it on that play. Oh, Prince really wanted to fire that three. Waits for the rest of his team to come back down court. Do you remember Bogans hit two shots right at the start of this ball game, but he glided on that last jump shot to his left. Hawkins again penetrates, looks to kick. 
Prince looked up at the clock. Hawkins, he'll take the three. Nice. And connects. Cuts the lead in half. 41-38, Maryland. Hawkins always looks past before shot. He's shooting 29% from three, but that one he was left wide open. Going to Baxter, trying to get him involved in the offense. Doubled up. And kept alive, Mouton. Kamara with the box out on Baxter. And there's where Wilcox should be on that glass. If they're going to double down on... Push off by Blake. To Kamara one. Let's take a look at that one, Billy. Well, one. my call is that it is in the cylinder. Let's see. Ball's up. I don't you, think oh, so. Oh, I don't think so. Any portion of the ball in the cylinder is a violation. Any portion. Uh, it looked like it was definitely on the outer side of the, of the you rim. You and Bonnie are giving me a rough time here in the second half. <laughs> you deserve it. I'll tell you what, I think you're rooting for somebody uh, here. Hogan's with the drive. 41-40. Kentucky's cut into that lead quickly. Again, back to Baxter. Baxter just so strong in there, but you can see Gary Williams right off the bat. Baxter only had three shots in the first half. They're going to him on almost every possession when it's a half-court offensive set. Tomorrow's second foul. Nobody paying attention. Oh, Wilcox sends that one into the press row as he's fouled. So many times in this tournament, we have seen an out-of-bounds situation. Guys with their head turned. An easy basket takes place right there. After the foul on Hawkins, Maryland's Chris Wilcox at the line for two. Wilcox seven in that first half, and uh, really the important basket is the way that he put the ball on the floor, recognized nobody guarding him right at the end of the half on that dunk. Kamara out, Marquise Estel comes back in. He's a sub for Kentucky, but started 12 games this year. Two free throws makes it a three-point Terrapin lead. You know, Hayes is a, a smart kid for a freshman. You notice there, he, he wasn't at all excited with Wilcox charging at him in that press situation. Just took his time, made the good, easy pass. Came a starter very late in the year. This is his eighth straight start. Prince on the floater, tipped up Hogan's. And Dixon comes out with it for Maryland. Again, into Baxter. He's going to make him double down. Oh, Hayes was on the ball. Hawkins saying, wait a minute, that's a tie-up. Eddie Hightower says, no, it's not, and it's on Hayes. Well, that looked like a good block to me. But Maryland doing a good job forcing Kentucky to double down on Baxter, who has had a lot of touches in his second half compared to the first half. Lonnie Baxter, the first Terrapin since Buck Williams to lead Maryland in rebounding three straight years. Buck Williams, a star back in 79, 80, 81. Well, you remember last year with the tremendous tournament that Baxter had, he was the West Regional's MVP. And he came into this season as the all-time careering scorer in the NCAA for the University of Maryland. Dixon has passed him with the great games he's had so far in the 202 season. Very steady player. Baxter hits two. He's off to a good start in the second half after small numbers in the first half. Well, you wonder how many times Blake and Hawkins practiced against each other being on the same high school team. Here they are tonight in this kind of a game working so hard against each other. Bogans pull up two. Yes. Bogans with 13. Remember, when he gets 20, they are 5-0. Well, he's come alive here in the NCAAs with 40 points in the first two games after struggling with his shooting all year. Swatted away, looked like maybe a foul, no call. Hawkins weaving his way, looks outside. Boy, there are some fouls not being called here, hard to believe. And Prince's three ties it at 45. That was a situation, had the fouls been called, Kentucky wouldn't have the opportunity for the three. Prince ties it 45 all. Dixon with a foot on the line. That's a two. Uh, Bogans just didn't fight his way out. 
That's what Tubby Smith might have been talking about. That's too easy a look for Dixon. He and, he and Bogans have a little conversation with each other down there. Bogans, three. And Baxter with the rebound. Maryland's got the numbers. Good time. He wanted a foul on the shot. He's appealing again. No call. You told me a great story about when Keith was 15 years old. What did he talk to you about? He told me that this ball or uh, round pill will take him somewhere in life. I said, if you stay with it, it will. I can guarantee you that. And he stuck with it. He went to the rec centers down in Alexandria, uh, the boys club. Um, the lease on, on in South Alexandria. And I had to go find him in the evening, bring him home. But that's, that's the way it was. I knew where he was. And I had no problem with him being out late as long as I knew where he was. Well, all that time has certainly paid off because he's had double figures in each of the three tournament games, Jim. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Yes, Herbie Bogans watching his son, Keith, with 13 on the night so far. Kentucky possession down two. Jim, in a game that's this tight, teams cannot afford to throw it away with plays like they had, turnovers that were really not contested. And Keith Bogans ties it at 47. He's given Dixon all he can handle. Dixon, an outstanding defensive player. First team all-conference defense for the ACC, but Bogans uses his strength when he powers down inside. Boy, Baxter was wanting it. He was wide open. Nicholas found him. And you see what Baxter did? Just when he knew Estel was there for the block, he took it on the other side of the rim, put it back up inside. Clever inside post player. Baxter with eight, six of them after the intermission. Baxter looks a little tired right now, though. Daniels, spin move, nowhere to go. Got numbers here, three on one with Prince back. Nicholas gives it up. Dixon converts. And look what Baxter did. He stayed back to give defensive balance, unlike we, what we've been seeing earlier in the game. Smart play. Maybe he's tired, but in any case, we'll give him credit. Hawkins has it stripped, gets it back, tipped up. Estel and Kentucky ball. Kentucky twice in this half has come back to tie it, but never take the lead. I think that Gary Williams notices that Baxter's really been expended a lot of injury. Uh, well, he's going to take out Wilcox instead of Baxter. A lot of energy, but he keeps uh, Baxter in the game. That does surprise me. Maybe he just wants Baxter to keep getting these touches and have his team used to getting that ball down inside. Hawkins beautifully set up to Estel. Now you have to ask, ask this question of the Maryland big men. Hawkins has shown all night that he'll put the ball, penetrate, and then look to kick out. That time you had both Holden and Baxter go over to double team or actually triple team Hawkins, leaving their men wide open. A hold call against Daniels. Watch this. Hawkins goes in. Now watch how many men are going to be on Hawkins. They're the two Maryland big men, Holden and Baxter, leaving Estel wide open. Not a wise play. You got to play Hawkins to pass, not to shoot. Well, Bogans really fought over the top that time. He did to close in on yes, Dixon. He, he was looking to fire up the three from the corner. And Blake penetrates. Off balance shot. A two to tie it for the third time in the half. A three to take the lead for the first time in the half. Estel is a good outside shooter. Again, there he goes. Penetrate, kick out. Prince, baseline move. Beautiful. Tied at 51. He has the best floating one-hander in college basketball. He has 15 for the game. Snapping it inside, Baxter, nice soft touch. There was a case, Daniels is so far outside he can't get in there to double team. And Gary Williams is just riding his horse, Baxter. Baxter breathing so heavily out there. The senior doesn't want to play his last game tonight. Nice help by Holden. Daniels screened by Estel. Bogans underneath. Dixon really forced that steal. Nice play by Baxter to come back and help Holden out so there was a passing lane. This game's getting brutal down inside on the rebounding, Jim. Nixon on a curl. 
Oh, Estill ties it up, and the arrow belongs to Maryland. It's amazing Dixon was able to end up on his feet on this one. Watch Estill just tear the ball back. Dixon, about at a 45-degree angle, and ends up still on his feet. Dixon is really being guarded beautifully by Bogans in this half. He's just not letting him get free. Kamar with the long arms, and Dick Dixon respects him. Not looking to take the jump shot over a, what amounts to a seven-footer. Great screen. Under the rim, Nicholas. Nice play by Kamara. Didn't want to be the guy on the break. Mouton on the reach in. These two met in the NCAA tournament back in 1988. In the second round, Kentucky beat Maryland. And Maryland did not make another appearance into the NCAA tournament until 1994 when Gary Williams took them to the tournament. And he's now taken them nine straight years. This year, their first ever number one seed. Well, Gary probably took over this Maryland program in as bad a shape as any program of its uh, caliber has ever been. Kentucky has tied it up three times in this half, but not taken the lead. Jim, first time tonight we've seen a zone defense by any of the teams. Maryland in a 1-2-2 zone. Hawkins recognized what's going on. Prince is trying to find a spot. There he is, deep corner. Eight on the shot clock. He's got great range, remember, on that jump shot. Hawkins inside. Kamara swatted away by Holden. Mouton. Oh, that's a tough shot by Mouton. He was worried about the shot blocking of Prince. They say it touched Prince last. Mouton should have taken his ball to the basket. What a block here by Randall. See if Gary Williams stays in that zone defense, and if so, does Tubby Smith change his lineup? Dixon for the first time tonight played by Hawkins, a smaller man. And Dixon trying to get open with Hawkins. Dixon. Nah, he was too impatient on that shot. First time tonight he's faced a smaller man, wanted to shoot over him. Bogans, Nicholas draws the charge. Terrific defense. Third. Foul on Bogans. Watch Nicholas move his feet. Established position. Bogans just kept right on coming. Ten thirty-nine to play. Three on Bogans. Fitch checks in for Kentucky. Bogans will sit. That counts as a turnover for Bogans. That's his first turnover in the NCAA tournament in some seventy minutes of play. He's had a very solid NCAA tournament, Jim, in all respects. After a year that was somewhat down for what was expected of him. Nice pass. Blocked from behind by Estel. Randall had gone up with it. Estel knocked it away, and the foul called on Blake. His third, three on Blake. There was an excellent pass on the inside. Randall had the position. Here comes Baxter back with the refs. And we'll all remember what Blake means to this Maryland team if he gets into foul trouble. The famous Duke comeback where Blake fouled out with a minute and 30-some seconds to go. Duke a year down, ago. Yeah, Duke down and uh, came back without Blake in the lineup. He's, Maryland stays in the 1-2-2 zone. Look for Prince to try to get a screen and a jumper. Estor. And he's going to the line. Called on Baxter, his third. A lot of time, Jim. Ten minutes to go in this ball game. Fouls on key people starting to pile up a little bit. Baxter with three and Bogans. Two secondary scores, the primary being Dixon and Prince, but uh, very critical to their team. That's the first point in the game for either side in almost three minutes. Wilcox comes in for Holden. I would have anticipated this game be a little higher scoring game, particularly with the flow that they wanted to have early. But the defense inside just doesn't give you any easy baskets. Kentucky catches up for the fourth time in the half. Oh, 
Nicholas over Prince. Yes, for three. Boy, it is hard to shoot over a seven-footer. Nicholas felt he was hit on the hand with that shot. Hawkins. Maryland ball. Foul trouble here. Blake and Baxter with three for Maryland. Bogan's three for Kentucky. I would say that this Blake third is more critical than any of those, Jim, because he is a guy playing defense, plus he's so critical in handling the ball. Wilcox. Five quick ones for the Terrapins. Let's see if they stay in this zone defense. They sure do. Tubby Smith not thinking Carruth here, who earlier in this year would have been the zone buster. Tomorrow over the top to Estel. First field goal for Kentucky in over four minutes. Instead of going outside with the jump shot, that was a little easy getting to the top of the key right inside for an easy one. In the lane, Baxter got the roll. Baxter looks refreshed now, having been on that bench for a couple of minutes. Estel to Camaro. Tipped up, spins out, Kentucky ball. Some missed assignments. Jim in that zone. Now Merrill on the out of bounds goes back to their man to man. Prince on a smaller man will try to shoot over him. He wants a clear out. Dixon came over for a moment to help out. And Dixon reached in. Dixon was really smelling that, wasn't he? He knew exactly what Prince wanted to do. He loves to come away from the ball for those steals. We talked about all the great things he does offensively and that he made all defensive team. But the stat that I love about him is that in all his career, he's never fouled out of a game. That's some combination. Oh. That's the second on Dixon. On the fly, Estel gets it to go. Boy, Estel has such soft hands around the basket. He has eight points, all of them in the second half. But just like Holden, Estel, a guy capable of having big games offensively. Wilcox bangs it home. Maryland going inside, inside, Baxter, Wilcox. A little stamina situation for the big men in this game going to be important down this stretch. Hawkins threw it away. Fitch was cutting to the basket. Well, we have seen... Uh, a national champion out here already tonight those Kentucky cheerleaders eight straight national championship they've been to Washington but not to see Maryland play to see the president at the White House yeah they had a little visit here That's in the last it. couple of weeks spread offense now for Maryland looking to pull Kentucky out farther on the perimeter setting up Baxter who's being guarded by Estel over the top Wilcox Mouton with the putback Power game now being applied by Maryland on the inside. 3 fouls on Bogans, but he's got to come back in the game. Posting up Dixon down low. Maryland is scoring almost every trip now. After Kentucky had come back to tie it. Estel with a huge half. 10 points in the second half. Estel had 21, 8 for 12 against Auburn. There's Baxter inside. That's goaltending. I really like what Gary Williams has done in this second half. We talked about it at halftime. Baxter only had three shots in the first half this entire second half, and you can imagine what it was like at, during that halftime. And there's the goal, 10. Prince got a piece of it, but during that halftime, I guarantee he said, this ball is going inside in the second half and has been the difference in the game. Prince trying to come off a double screen. Bogans on the blocks. Kamara outside. There's Prince. the floater. There it is. You say no one's better in the college game. Not even close, Jim. He's listed at 6'10", but when he floats in there, it's a seven-footer. It's kind of like a straight-on Kareem Jabbar hook shot when he was in college. 
Not putting him in the same class, but there it is again, going inside. Wilcox wildly gets it back. And they say it touched Kentucky last. Chuck Hayes reporting in for Kentucky. What Tubby Smith is trying to do here is to get a little bit more strength in the game. He feels that Wilcox and Baxter have been pushing Kamara out from underneath that basket. Hayes at 240 or so gives him a little bit more stability. Look at this shot. Are you kidding? Prince, Baxter on his back. Not a good shot for Wilcox to be taken under those circumstances. That's the first empty trip for Maryland after six straight scoring possessions. Well, Wilcox on the year, Jim, has taken one three-point shot. Now, you'd have to question, with that kind of lead, why would you take your second one? Logan's moving nicely without the ball. Estill charge. Taj Holden making a lot of great decisions out here tonight. We knew both of these teams were so deep with talented players at all positions. And <clears throat> Holden tonight has been really a big factor for Maryland off the bench. Nicholas goes to the bench after some very productive minutes, including a huge three right after Kentucky had tied it up for the fourth time in this half. Blake really good about pulling that ball back out, isn't he? Short on the shot. Don't know why he took that one either. These are two bad shots by Maryland. Bad offensive sequence. Ah! Estel going to the line. Hawkins didn't have anywhere to go. No, he Hawkins will put the ball on. He's a tremendous penetrator, Jim. But 90% of the time, he is going to look to pass after he leaves his feet. Second foul on Holden. Estel has really performed beautifully in this game. Remember when we saw him in his coming out party a year ago when he had that outstanding game, 19 points and 11 rebounds. Might have been our player in the game at North Carolina. Remember that when sure Kentucky did. was kind of floundering around a little bit? North Carolina was eventually going to move to be number one in the nation, but Estel played a great game that day. 12 and a half. He gave his scholarship back to the school, so he's officially a walk-on and a Kentucky homegrown talent out of Richmond. Well, he Kentucky. did that because they were over the limit of 13. Under five minutes to play. Three-point game at the Carrier Dome. Dixon's got a big man on him. Holden. Wilcox. Oh. That's Estel. I don't think Maryland has really looked for a shot beyond about three feet in the last 12 minutes. They are really pounding things inside. Dixon hasn't had a chance to shoot too much in the late going. No, he really hasn't. As you can see in the first half, Dixon was the leading scorer and was very efficient with that scoring, but they didn't go inside much. But boy, this second half has been all inside. Nicholas returns. And Blake will get a rest. What time, guys? What time now? Here we go. What? 441 to determine the second finalist in the East Regional. UConn is already positioned for a game on Sunday afternoon in the East Final. And there's a substitution of quality. Baxter in for Wilcox. 68-63, Terrapins with four and a half remaining. Oh, tough. Hawkins. Tough pass, Hawkins. Yep, took it right into traffic, and Maryland just held their ground, Jim. 15th turnover by Kentucky. I really think that Hawkins, and that was a oh, good move. Hawkins read it. Dixon defending. No shot, no shot right here. No shot, foul no outside. Shot. That'll be the seventh team foul against Maryland. It'll put Bogans on the line, a one and one. Here's the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Bench points, and for Kentucky, that's all Estel. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Jim, Gary Williams doing a wise uh, thing right here from a substitution standpoint. He knows that Hawkins can really pressure the ball. And when Nicholas out there as the point guard, Blake sitting down, I think that he felt that Kentucky might be able to turn that ball over. 
which Bogans was able to do. Uh, comes up short on that foul shot, however, so he comes right back with Blake so he can have his primary ball handler on the floor. Huge miss on the front end of a one-on-one -on -one with four minutes remaining. Dixon, big step to the basket. Follow-up, no good. Good hit ahead. Prince will pull up. Pull up three. And Blake boxed out for the rebound. Doesn't have numbers, pulls it out. I thought Prince had hit that shot. You knew he was going to pull up for the three. Would have cut it to two. almost had a three-point opportunity. Estel with the push. Now Baxter uses that wide body. We saw it uh, so many times where he gets that excellent position. He just wears down that defender. Estel has been called upon to play a lot of consecutive minutes in this second half. He's done the job on the offensive end, but you know he's got to be wearing down a little bit defensively. Baxter with 14 on the game, 12 in the second half. Big half by Baxter, big half by Estel. Baxter been to the line 208 times this year. Just goes to show you how tough it is. And he gets you in foul trouble. He makes you go to your bench. Short word on that one. Oh, I got a Tayshawn Prince was 17 for Kentucky, but the Cats are down seven. Billy, how do they get back into it? Well, Jim, that real, one stat surprised me there. Kentucky leading 33-31 and rebounding. Good job that time by Holden, who is really having an excellent game out here tonight. Bogans back into the ball game, and Prince into the ball game as well. I think that Kentucky is not think strictly three, but with Prince, they have an opportunity to go outside and maybe he can throw one up. Kentucky down seven. Had to burn off a timeout, failing to get the ball inbounds before the five count. Bogan tripped by Holden. That'll be a one-on-one -on -one for Bogans, who's already missed on one occasion the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Nicholas and Wilcox return for the Terrapins. Bogans tonight. Uh, Past Frank Ramsey on the all time scoring list. Prince passed Alex Groza last week and Cotton Nash yeah. in tonight's game. Number so you said an all time. Now you got to remember, guys only played three years back in those days. In the case of Prince, is a four year player. Bogans misses the front end of two one on ones now. Kentucky can ill afford to come down to court with possessions and not get some points on the board. Dixon outside tonight. Normally he's been down on that baseline. Nicholas is the one doing all the running on the baseline. Six seconds. Long three. And a rebound plucked away by Prince. He's going to drive it all the way. Rolls out and Baxter secures it. That was a tough miss for Prince. So a terrific drive on his part. He'd like to have that one back. Kentucky's had his chances. Two blown front ends of one and ones. That missed lay in. Rejection, Kamara. 2.20 to play. Maryland surprisingly spreading things out, so Baxter no longer the factor down inside. Gary Williams trying to use a little clock here. Prince, that was a wild shot. Prince is on the floor, so there's numbers. Maryland, bad pass by Blake. Prince is open for a three. Blake closed in on him. Bogans gives it up. Hayes. Timeout, Kentucky. This kind of thing really gets you in trouble. What you want to do now is use as much clock as you can. Don't give that other team a chance. Hawkins, his former high school teammate, fouls him. It's a one and one. That's the ninth team foul on Kentucky. Bubby Smith looked like he wanted a foul on that play. I think it's a little early to foul, just down two possession game. Particularly the way that Maryland looks like they're wanting to use some clock. You've got enough time here to get the ball back. Blake misses. Boy, we've seen some front ends of one and ones. 
Very important in this game. 87% free throw shooter missing on the front end of the one and one. Hawkins again looking for help. That's, That's a travel on Kamara. Kamara expected Wilcox to, in effect, go for the block. But again, you see Hawkins penetrate and pass. Mouton in for Maryland. And Is Blake goes Blake out. out huh? Interesting. And he misses the front end of a one on one, but he's 87% free throw shooter on the season. As soon as he came by, Gary Williams just said, just sit down, I'm putting you right back in. You talk about a dangerous pass cross court under the other team's basket. Look at Prince sitting down there and guarding a smaller man. Nice job. Next Kentucky foul will be double bonus time. Nicholas lost control of it. Prince up ahead. Here come the Cats. And right through the fingertips of Bogans. Both teams really turning this game over. Very uncharacteristic of teams of this caliber. Tubby Smith over there, though. Again, the change personality that we see of him with this team. Blake right back for Maryland. You talk about 30 seconds or so, Jim, of missed opportunities Swander for both teams. chances on each end. Absolutely. Blake coming to the ball over the top to Baxter, gets it to Blake. Just under a minute to play. Maryland with the five-point lead and possession. And a foul outside. On Bogans, it'll be, you know, on Prince, it'll be a double bonus, two-shot situation. Four times in the second half, Kentucky pulled even with Maryland, but they never moved ahead. Jim Dixon to the line, we talked about um, what a good free throw shooter Blake is, but Dixon's a 90% free throw shooter. Now Fitch coming into the ball game, going to try to get a little bit more outside shooting as Tubby Smith knowing he's going to have to think three here. To take it to seven, very important free throw, makes it a three possession game. Maryland, you can see with Holden there, tough guy to throw over the top of. Hawkins going to push this ball up the floor. You can go for two here because you need three possessions anyway. But Walking. you don't want to take time. Tayshawn with the three. Tough shot. Last touch by Maryland. And if you're Blake, you did the wise thing there. Just to go ahead, you don't need to get possession of the ball. Just make sure that Maryland doesn't, I mean, that Kentucky doesn't get an easy putback. Bogans comes off a screen. Looked at a three, kicks it out. Fitch shoots one instead, front of the rim. Maryland ball, Mouton foul, he'll shoot two. Estel with a foul just as he came down. Well, I, I am really wanting to compliment Tubby Smith in regard to his demeanor with this team, a team that's had all kinds of problems this year. And you can see a complete difference in the way he used to respond on the sidelines. Estel fouls out with that one. Jim, it's tough for a coach to make that kind of change in midseason, and it shows you just what a smart guy he is. This season started out in the NCAA tournament. Eight coaches who have won national championships. Jim Calhoun and Tubby Smith were here tonight. Jim Calhoun's still alive. Looks like it may be down to one. Estel with a huge second half. 12 points on the night, all of them in the second half. Fouls out. He really did an excellent job offensively and had to play a lot of continuous minutes and guarding Baxter on the other end of the floor. Good job on his part. Luton to shoot two. Kentucky fell last year in the round of the Sweet 16 to USC in an East regional game down in Philadelphia. Luton two for two. Nine point lead. Half minute to play. That's the largest lead of the night. Hawkins. Loses control of it going in. And it's looking now like a Maryland-UConn final in the East. They met earlier this year in Washington. And Maryland beat the Huskies 77-65.
I would have to say that that game has very little relevance now, Jim, because I think this uh, Connecticut team, which was extremely young at that point in the season, a lot better ball club now than it was then. Grown up big time in the late going with 12 straight wins. Dixon for two. Again, 90% shooter. Jim, I, I mentioned that Kentucky had beat number one seeds. They beat Minnesota, remember, in the final four in 97. And then, you know, you don't ever think about this, but Rick Pitino was not the number one seed going into when he played Mass. Massachusetts was number one in the nation that particular year in the final four. There's Tayshaun, Tayshaun going Prince. out. That's great, the, great career. Coming to a close here tonight. One of the most memorable Kentucky performances ever with that 41 point. Nine rebound, four assists, three blocks, no turnover performance against Tulsa. Prince's reign at Kentucky comes to an end here tonight. Bogans floats. Back out, Hawkins with a three. Rattles at home. You can see Maryland, all the players hollering, no foul. They do not want to stop this clock. And Kentucky is not going to foul now either. Let this game end up. Timeout called by Dixon. Doubled up, he calls a timeout. You get the feeling, Billy, when Kentucky kept climbing right back to even, but never able to take it beyond that, that it's going to be that way in the second half. Mouton for the lay-in. Breakaway, Maryland there was expecting to have to throw the ball backwards. Kentucky not anticipating they'd go for the score. And Mouton just broke loose. Advanced Maryland in your brackets. And Jim, I do agree with you, Matt. In regard to getting close but not getting over the hump, you see that so often, particularly in NCAA tournament games.